Hi, and welcome back to the digital job site where this um, this session is uh, adding the crown molding to this uh, shape that we created earlier. And uh, this is the quick and slick part using the follow me tool to add crown molding. All right, we've got this uh, this geometry we created in the first video, uh, and we want to extract out of this um, video the perimeter that we created with the offset tool in the first video. And one more feature I want to add to this is something I call a handle. And uh, you'll see how this applies as the video goes on. But I'm going to just arbitrarily select one corner of our crown molding perimeter and a corner of the walls. And uh, so we'll pay attention to that little handle. Now when I double click uh, this plane, you'll see that it takes the plane plus the perimeter. And the perimeter is what, we after, what we're after. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key and deselect the plane deselect that borderline where we're not going to have crown molding and then I'm going to select the, the little handle line that we created. So I'm going to uh, copy this geometry inside the edit group mode. I'm going to delete that geometry because you don't want that in there anymore. I'm going to delete the ceiling just so we can see into our room later. Uh, actually it looks like I saw I, uh, the floor left us there. But Okay, let's add a floor in here. Just retrace one line that puts a floor in. Now I'm going to take the ceiling out. And then we're going to get out of the wall group edit mode and then paste the perimeter. I see what happened. I, uh, I selected that floor along with the perimeter somehow. Anyways, here's our perimeter. And um, in the process of creating this floor plan, I originally had it uh, in this mirror image mode. Um, so now that I'm pasting this geometry, SketchUp didn't forget that. And uh, it's created an opposite or a mirror image of what we actually want to end up with. So while this geometry is, geometry is selected, I'm going to grab the scale tool. This is how you make a mirror image of things. Uh, just select the geometry you want to make a mirror image of, grab a side handle, pull it back through itself. And um, you'll see in the value control box, I've got a number and I just want it to be negative 1, which creates a mirror image. So now this geometry here will be our crown molding perimeter that will fit on the shape of the room. The same process applies regardless of the configuration of the room or um, where the crown molding is going to run. The same process actually works, a uh, very similar process works for uh, adding chair rail or something like that to a room. But we, I want to group this geometry, so we're just going to quickly make a group out of it and then jump into the group edit mode for the next step, which is adding the um, crown molding profile. And people that are familiar with my videos uh, know that I use a technique called a drawing plane. So I'm just going to zoom down into one of these ends of this geometry. It acts a little funny because it's just dealing with a line and not a surface. And so here we go to create um, drawing plane. If you remember in the first video we said the crown molding was going to be three inches off the wall. Um, so I've gone three inches back and uh, let's just make this four and a quarter inch tall um, crown molding. And uh, looks like I wasn't paying attention to my direction and I drew a horizontal line there. I want to draw a vertical one. So I'm going to take the end of our 3 inch line. Now that I'm drawing in the blue direction, we'll go down 4.25 inches and I'm just going to crank out here, come back up, boom, we got a drawing plane to work on our crown molding. And uh, you can get specific. Uh, I'm planning on doing another digital job site post that shows how to um, use your actual crown molding profile, exact piece that you're going to use on a job. You can figure out your spring angle and your uh, compound miter angles if you cut your crown molding that way. But in this case I'm just going to come up with a generic crown molding. So we'll just come down 5 eighths of an inch for that. Um, we'll come out a quarter of an inch on the bottom and then we'll come up, oh, let's say, 3 quarters. Here I'm just entering decimals because it's a little easier for me. 
All right, with a couple of guidelines, now I'll grab the arc tool and put a little cove in the bottom of our crown molding. I'm just going to watch down here, zoom in to look at this little cove. And let's say, let's come up a, another quarter of an inch. Just throwing together a crown molding here. Now we're going to put the, uh, the face curves of the crown molding in. Something I like to do uh, is just create a reference uh, guide to kind of follow with the curves. You'll see how this works. And uh, I'm just going to eh, go about there. I'll put a little curve in this crown molding, then I'll snap that, grab that point, and this other point. You can see when that, uh, when the arc turns that turquoise color, it means it, that it's uh, the arc is tangent to this to the previous arc. So now I just got a, a handy little reversing curve. I'll throw a little um, uh, offset line in here. I don't like the angle of that. So I'm just gonna. Select there on the face of this. That gives us a line um, to be somewhat parallel with. And I'm going to just say our crown molding is three quarters of an inch thick. You can see how that guideline gives me what I need to create um, the profile for the crown molding. So using the drawing plane, these guidelines, I've created a profile that would be uh, not unlike. Um, some crowd molding that you might be considering using. And I kind of lost my way in the world there with um, by clicking out of uh, that zoomed in mode. All right, so we have a crown molding profile now, and uh, this is where the magic happens with, uh, oh, lost it again. And you'll see this little magnifying glass with a back arrow that will take you back to the previous view, which I keep losing because of the way this is set up. Anyways, this is where the magic happens with crown molding, SketchUp, and the Follow Me tool. So what I'm going to do is triple click this the line. I'm still in the component edit group. So um, we have the crown molding profile. We have our little handle, which we don't want to follow with crown molding. So I'm going to deselect that. Go back a couple of views, see if that will get me back into... There's a forward view, and uh, it's going to help get in there. Okay, so now we have the, the perimeter selected, deselected the handle. If I hold down Shift and trace our crown molding profile, it deselects that. So all that's left is the path we want the front of the crown molding to follow, which is offset three inches from the walls of the building. So once you've selected your path, hit the Follow Me tool, zoom in and click your profile. Give SketchUp a second to follow the geometry while I babble on here. And it is creating the crown molding. All the cuts, fits, and profiles it takes uh, to fit around the room. And you'll see that the crown molding is uh, all done. Miters fitted, uh, returns made here. And uh, all without a bottle of glue or anything, we even went around our curved room. And uh, that, didn't, that didn't take long at all. I wish I could hang crown molding that fast. Uh, anyways, I'm going to triple click this geometry, reverse the faces so it comes out white. I just like looking at it that way. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And then I click outside of that geometry. And lo and behold, we have a crown molding that goes completely around the room. And now, if you'll remember, the little handle we put on this. I'm going to select our crown molding group and then I'm going to put it over near the building here where we where we drew it and then by grabbing the very end of this crown molding and touching to the corner of the room that immediately and perfectly lines up the crown molding with the entire room so you can see it going around and uh, you can see all the features if we had uh, you know a, a chimney or a painting or something here. We have returns coming to the wall uh, by zooming out and around using the orbit tool. You can see how the crown molding would follow this bookcase around the wall. It's all simple enough to do. Another way of looking at this if we jump into the, the wall group and uh, retrace a line. Oops. Missed that corner. Press escape and then 
retrace a line, you can see by just retracing one line, it puts the whole uh, ceiling back in. I'm going to delete the floor. And now, um, by getting out of the, the group edit mode, you can look inside your room and see what the crown molding would look like with all these various features, the 45 degree corner. And uh, another little known fact to some is if you if you click the um, the zoom tool, which allows you to zoom in and out, and then type in a number. Watch the value control box. I'm typing in 75 degrees, and what does that does is widen out your field of view. It uh, it kind of distorts the geometry uh, and really skews uh, skews some lines, but it does give you a better perspective of the room as I. Uh, wildly zoom around the zoom around the room with the orbit tool. You can see what a fine job SketchUp did in installing crown molding. And, uh, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. It's kind of hard to zoom around here without getting in and out of um, uh, the room. It swings you out of the room. There, we just jumped above the ceiling in a second. A little clumsy with this orbit tool, but anyways, uh, there you have it. Crown molding, quick and slick, the SketchUp way. Hope you uh, found some tips that'll help you uh, create crown molding, other trim profiles for your SketchUp models, and come back to the digital job site anytime.